What's going on, folks? It's K Spade the Prospect. I am back today with a brand new episode of Fix the Knicks, which is my NBA 2K16, my GM gameplay. Folks, we got these Knicks looking like new money. We've been out here looking really good, man. Kind of got a problem right here. You got Chris Stapps Porzingis in my office asking me to lower the practice intensity. I've been pushing these guys. I want to see their ratings go up. I mean, I know they're not going to get better overnight, but I want to really push these guys to get better. But I got one of my stars in my office complaining that the intensity is a little too high. You got to listen to this guy and go in and see what changes we can make to try to, you know, suit the squad. And to be honest with you, once I got in here, I realized that the man was on to something. Like, not just one or two of the players, a lot of of the players was really tired. The first thing I looked at was player development. I was just not happy. You see how Kevin Serafin from November to December got a little bit better? That's what I was hoping to see. But when I went through and evaluated each of the players individually, it was a lot of sluggish people on season fatigue. It was some tired. I think I even saw some exhausted. So, I mean, damn, I guess I was cracking the whip a little too hard. I definitely don't want to beat these guys into the ground. We just passed the halfway mark. So we still got a lot of basketball remaining. And I want these guys fresh going into the playoffs. So what I'm going to start to do is, for one, I'm going to lower the intensity of the practice. Uh, I think I want to give them, like, one hard practice and one you know, like one high intensity, not very high, but just regular high, and then one low one. And I never have practices on back-to-back -back games. So that'll help them kind of recuperate some of their energy somewhat. But also, I want to start to use my rotation a little bit better. We don't play Sasha Vujicic at all. Uh, we don't play Klee Anthony early at all. So, you know, what I'm going to do is start to get these guys in the game more just to make sure I'm getting the most out of my players. The Knicks been looking good this year, y'all, and I would hate to not, you know, ride this thing all the way out. I believe we're a good playoff contender. We could go pretty far this season. Speaking of going far, let's get in this game, man. I got a great game for us today. You got the Miami Heat. Anytime we see this team, for some odd reason, we turn up. I don't know. Like, sometimes a team can have another team's number. When we play Miami, we turn up. So, you know, their star is going to be Chris Bosh. That's the guy to keep an eye on. D-Wade getting a little bit older, and he don't really have an outside jumper like that. So, He's not that big of a threat, but Miami has made some moves. And I don't know if you guys saw this in the last video when I was talking about the big trades leading up to the trade deadline, but Miami moved Luau Dang for Rudy Gay. It was some other players in the mix, but the two big names was Luau Dang and Rudy Gay. Early on to start the game, Chris Stapps Porzingis from outside cashing out that Rainmaker. This guy is so... He's so valuable to us, man. I love having Carmelo on this team. He's still the leader of this team, but Chris Stapps, he can do so much. For him to be 7'3", with an outside shot, and as good of a shot blocker as he is, I'm telling y'all, man, I think he's a cheat code. Right here, though, he meets another great shot blocker. That's a sign Whiteside denying him access at the cup. And he better respond, man. The Knicks came out the gate on fire. Before Chris Stapps could even get down the court, the Heat turned it over, and we hooked him up with the easiest fast break score of his of his career. I was going to say of his life, but, I mean, the kid's pretty young. But so far in his career, that's definitely the easiest fast break score he's gotten. Another guy for this Miami Heat team that provided a spark for them would be Gerald Green. As LaParis would say, get yourself a Gerald Green. Gerald Green is a guy that gets in the game and gets buckets. He's a bucket getter. So I knew they was going to depend on him, especially when I saw how slow they started. So at the end of the first quarter, man, Ray Allen behind the arc, cashing out that rainmaker right there. It, is it a game? Like, I know when we come to the garden, we usually turn up, but damn, is this even a game? I don't even know, y'all. Like, I know it's going to be a run, but I don't think any run could get this team back in it. Look at that beautiful move. Carmelo Anthony just hooked Gerald Green up with the Illis cross. It wasn't like one of those make you fall down crosses. It was just something so subtle that he just was going one way. A quick little change of direction. Gerald got back. He had to file him. We really nothing he could do, and Melo was too hype off of that guy. Too hype. In fact, early on, man, Melo continued to score for us in a in an array of crazy shots, man. He was just contorting his body all sorts of ways, getting the buckets, doing whatever we need him to do. That's why he's the leader. That's why he's a star. Oh, my God. Pat Bell missing the three, but look at this. Aaron Aflalo said try that again, Pat. Pat cashes out the second one. D1. Criticism you can give my Knicks is that they settle for a lot of threes. 
wait a minute. I don't even like the way that sounds. We take a lot of threes. I don't feel like we're settling though. We got some great perimeter shooters. We get great looks. And we just, we take a lot of threes. But that is a criticism that we deserve. Because if the shots are going in, we look good. When they're not going in, man, we look rough. I mean, we look bad. Look at this. Ray Allen taking the three. Can't get it to go. Mello being active on the boards with the tip in put back. Let's go, Mello. Bosh, what is, what is Bosh doing? What are you doing? So we go into the half with a very comfortable 15-point lead. We have taken 13 threes in the first half, y'all. Good. And we on pace for 26 damn threes. Matter of fact, maybe even more than that after we apply, you know, the sim to the last couple of minutes of each quarter. It, who knows, man? This team shoots a lot of threes. In the third quarter, they would get a boost from one of their stars. That would be Rudy Gay. Very quiet in the first half. I did expect them. Like I said, I expected a run. I didn't know who would be that guy to keep an eye on. But every time they push, Melo pushed right back. And he would push harder than they pushed us in the first place. D-Wade right here with the spin on Rooney. Getting it to go off the glass. Okay, I see you, D. What, welcome to the damn game, Dwayne. Where you been? Aaron Aflalo creeping down the court. Slow the defense. Forgot about him. He couldn't get the three to go. But the Knicks are on the glass. Kicking it back out to Porzingis for another opportunity from beyond the arc. Give me three on the deck. Let's get it, man. I like this squad. Look at the great defense leading the easy offense. Aflalo to Williams. Oop from beyond the three-point line. Let's go. Derrick Williams could be that guy, too. He's super athletic. I would like to see his perimeter shot get a little better. But once he get that perimeter shot, he could be that dude, y'all. And now, I don't know. He might be trade bait. I should probably let you guys know, man, the deadline came up to be, it was like the last date to re-sign players on your team. And one of the expiring contracts on my team is Aaron Aflalo. And I felt like I should probably re-sign him. But I didn't, y'all. Just come pull the trigger on it. So give me some feedback on that. How do you guys feel about that? I decided maybe, just maybe i wait and see what I can pick up in free agency. Maybe I could pick up somebody that I like a little better. And that's, that's tough because Double A been playing really well for us. But I don't know. Right here, though, Aaron got D-Wade with the D-Wade. D-Wade does that to everybody. Ask him how it feels. He got it done back to him. Bosh, one step inside the perimeter. He cashes out the mid-range there. We got to jump ahead to the fourth quarter. It is an 11-point game, so I guess Miami went on a bit of a run, which is really not enough. They got one more quarter to give it their last look. Heave ho. And then they ass up out of here. I mean, they out of here. For real. Look at this. Rudy Gay attacking the basket. Getting a little dunk to go. That's that's Rim Grazer-esque right there, Rudy. I don't know if you get old or what, bro, but I ain't like that. Two thumbs down. Two thumbs down. Beautiful pass right here. D-Wade pulling the midi. We know he's got a pretty good mid-range shot. We respect that shot. He gets it to go. And look at Porzingis moving without the ball right here. Getting it on the cut to the basket. Pulling the midi. Getting it to rattle home. And Porzingis is definitely, he's definitely that guy this game that's like, you know what? I'm just going to quietly dominate. Didn't score a ton of points, but just quietly dominate it. Here's another beautiful play. Moving without the ball. Getting the pass from Melo. Cashing out that mid-range. I knew once I got the timing to Porzingis' shot down, I already knew what it was going to be. His shot is a little tricky, though, so I struggled with it at some point. But I feel like I got it now. I think we Gucci. Rudy Gay right here. Stepping back. Got a little ISO game going until he gets the pick. Steps around the pick. Pulls the midi. Cashes that out. Beautiful play right there. Melo probably feels some kind of way, though. Melo don't like that. We come right back. Turn the ball over. And Rudy Gay again, this time over the tower. And you can't do that. You better just pull that midi. I don't know why Rudy won't shoot too much, man. He will, but he kept trying to attack the basket. That ain't it. Pat Bell from outside. That is it. Let's go. So we got Pat Bell cashing. Everybody on the team is cashing, man. There's two minutes remaining. And look at Porzingis right here. One-on-one -on -one with the Bostrick. Spinning off of him, and I thought he was about to end Dwayne Wade's career right there. If he'd have dunked that, man, I'd have went crazy. He still gets the basket to go, man. Everybody dapping each other up. Knicks look good, y'all. We look good. I might, I might just send him straight to the playoffs. I'm ready to get this team in the postseason, man. I really am. So, like I said, Miami made it a game. They lost by 11. At some point, they was down 15, damn near 20 points. But they still got beaved up. That's all that matter. The Knicks look great, folks. 
that's all I got for today's video. The next video is a must-see because we got the Portland Trail Blazers again, and this is a team that we have lost to already once before. Carmelo Anthony was the player of the game, even though he tapered off there in the fourth quarter. When he started to cool off, Porzingis was just heating up, so it didn't hurt the Knicks at all. If you guys enjoyed this video, let me get a thumbs up. And if you're new here, you want to follow this series and one of my other series, subscribe, become a member of the Wolfpack today. And I'm out the next time, y'all. Peace.